Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode, our second episode uh, with Diana and Lila, where we talk about all things real estate. Hey, guys. Happy to be here today. Um, today's topic, we're going to talk about investment properties and how to find one and what are the things that you should look for when you're ready to make that first purchase. So um, I guess, you know, to start off, you have the money. Now what? Where do you start, right? Um, Lila, what do you think is the most important thing to look for? You know, for me, um, and it really depends on each person, I would say if you, you know, are very nervous about where to invest, I would just start in your backyard. Um, you know, this way you can kind of get your eyes on it. You'll be the person that's, you'll be the boots on the ground. Um, and, but if you're, you know, willing to step outside and your market is not investable or it is too expensive to invest in, then I would look outside, um, in any market that you're comfortable with or in markets where you have family and friends that can be your boots on the ground or a location where you like to travel to. So I will just start with that. Gotcha. So I know there's different types of investments that people can, people can make. Um, you, you could either do like a buy and hold where you buy it and you rent it out to somebody for like you know a year or midterm, short term. And then there's also fix and flips. And then like for me, my first one that I'm mm -hmm. doing is short term rental. Do you think that there's any... Mm -hmm. Like, if one's better than the other to start out as a first-time investor? Yeah, I don't think there's one strategy over another one that would be the best. Again, mm -hmm. it's really what you're comfortable with. Um, you know, are you good at project management where, you know, you're comfortable with fix and flips because that takes a lot of project management, right? It also takes a lot of... Um, people, um, especially contractors, you have to find the best contractor for the job. Um, that would take a lot of time for you to interview as well to find the best contractors. And, you know, we can definitely talk about contractor in a, a different episode because that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one of the biggest things for me is finding that right contractor. And it's not just to fix and flip, but really to fix anything, right? A handyman, a plumber, electrician. Uh, and I know, Diana, that you've had some challenges finding the right contractor as well recently. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like trying to find, you have to get quotes and then making sure that they do a great, good job. And especially when you're not there, like my property is two and a half hours away, so I'm not there all the time. So it's just trying to make sure I find a good network of people I could count on and building that like list so that this way in the future when I want to expand that I have this kind of great refer like a great list of people I can count on but I so I know you talked about location yeah. so besides location um what are other things you think people need to think about um besides location I would say if you're looking at an investment property the first thing that you should or maybe the second thing is is analyzing a deal so now that you found the lo right location maybe you found the right property, um, the next step is really to analyze the deal and making sure that the number works for you, right? So are you looking for specific cash flow or are you looking to, you know, sit on the property and, uh, and you know, bet on the equity play or e equity gain on this property? Um, so doing your number first, before deciding whether you're gonna buy this property, it's very, very important. Um, and again, that cash flow is really dependent on what's important to you. So if you're investing in long-term, mid-term or short-term, the rate of return or your cash flow can all be quite different, right? Because all of them take specific, um, takes more work uh, than the other. So short-term definitely takes more work, more risk, mm -hmm. but your gain is more, you know, op optimal versus right. long-term uh, rentals. You are not doing as, as much work. Um, so your return on, on revenue or your cash flow might be a little bit smaller. So mm -hmm. for me specifically, just to give me an example, for my long-term rentals, um, if I could get, 
you know, eight to 10% return in this current market, I would be happy. Mm -hmm. Um, For midterm, I would be looking at 10 to 15. And for my short term rentals, I'm hoping to get at least 15 to 20%. That's just the bare minimum. Now, I know other investors for short term rentals, they want at least 20% and 30%. Um, Mm -hmm. But given where we are in the current climate, and I'm only talking about the current climate, um, finding a 20 to 30 percent right now, it's a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you feel that the 15 to 20 percent does not justify all the work that you're putting in, then Mm -hmm. I wouldn't pull the trigger. Um, It's really up to you. So that's just my two cents. So one of the terms I think that gets thrown out around a lot is like, and I know we could spend a whole episode talking about just like ARV. Like when you're talking to investors, they're always saying like, what's the ARV? Um, I don't know, maybe we could talk about what what that is and explain it a little bit just for the people who are new to investments listening. Yeah, so the ARV is the after repair value. So the after repair value is basically what the house is worth after you consider all of your costs, right? So your costs are your renovation costs, that's a big cost, your buy and sell cost if you're flipping, Mm -hmm. uh, and your financing cost while you're doing the renovation. Um, And all of these costs will be added up um, to come up to a a value that is uh, what we call the after repair value. And you want to make sure yeah, so you want to make sure your after re- repair value is also your comp value on the property as well. So you you know that you're buying the right property for the right value and uh, and gaining the right return on your investment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like that's where real est- like it's important to have a trusted real estate agent on your side because you're talking about comps and things. And I think a lot of people like they have the money, they want to invest, but then they don't know how to run comps. So where do I go to find that information? And I think actually recently I've right. gotten a lot of calls from clients who are interested in buying like a fix and flip or something or a rental. And what I'm doing is running these comps for them. So for those of you who don't know what a comp is, it's just a comparable, it's like an analysis to see like what the house, other similar homes, like that house you want to buy, what they sold for recently. Now it's just a, right. It's just an estimate. Um, It's not an actual appraisal. So, you know, depending on what your finance situation, that may or may not be important for you. you... Yeah, absolutely. And like Diana said, you know, finding that that investor friendly agent to run these comps are so important because I can tell you the very first flip that I did, um, I had an agent. who ran the comps on the property, um, but he didn't realize, right, that the street that this house sits on gets a little busy during rush hour. Um, And so, you know, if he knew that, then he would have reduced the comps by the environment that the house sits in. And he didn't. And so he gave me a overly inflated comp that didn't justify for when I went to sell, uh, sell this, sell this property. So, uh, having an investor friendly agent is important, but also making sure that this agent has local knowledge of the specific location. Um, and one thing that I've always learned is, you know, a a lot of realtors, they want to focus on every single location, right? They have such a huge, expansive footprint when they're looking at and survey their clients. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows every single street in a huge geographic area. And so I usually look for agents who are very focused and specializes in specific areas, especially from an investment perspective, from a buy typical conventional buy and sell of homes, it might be a little different, but from an investor perspective, having an agent with that local specialized knowledge is the most important. Cause like I said, things like the street or 
you know, you can literally cross the street and be in a different school district. If an agent doesn't work in that area, they might not know and inflate your comps. And that will ultimately be considered in your ultimate ROI, right? Mm -hmm. So that's very important. Um, even with even though I purchased mine in New Jersey, I'm licensed to purchase. I could have bought it myself, but I wanted an agent that actually lived in town, knew the streets, told me which side of the street, yep. which is a better value home and like where I could get more money and more return. And also when you're talking about zip codes, yeah. too, like specifically um, in where I live, we're in Montgomery, we're right next to Princeton. Princeton average price point of a house is like in the millions, right? But then the Princeton zip code, depending on where you are with the Princeton zip code, you could go to Montgomery, you could go to Princeton, you could go to Franklin, you could go to Lawrenceville. So it's like, you have to know what, the, what streets go to what schools and what districts. So local right. knowledge is important, right? So I think, um, yep. I think definitely like it's okay to reach out to a, different realtors in, but if you're looking at different markets and interview them, see what they know about the, the neighborhood and if they're investor friendly, so they could get you the right comps. <laughs> so, so Diana, um, I know that you just started this real estate investment journey. Tell us a little bit about your experience. How did you find, you know, the location of this property and, you know, how do you feel about it now? Okay. Gotcha. Well, I wanted to buy something in a place where I, could enjoy it myself too and that I loved and my family love we love going to Cape May so we started looking at houses there but you know Cape May is very expensive there's not a lot of homes and then it, the price point was just too high for us for our first investment property so then we started looking like what's around the radius we knew we wanted to be by the water and we saw a lot of homes pop up on the villas which is just north of Cape May and you know I've never been there because usually we go straight to Cape May so we booked it. We took a little short weekend vacation, drove down there, checked out a bunch of the different homes that were for sale to get a feel of the neighborhood. And mm -hmm. I, I looked up different agents. I called and I interviewed them, asked them, like, you know, what, how, how long have they been doing business in the area? Do they live in town? You know, and just asked the questions because I needed somebody that was honest and could tell me the truth and not just try and sell me anything, right? Um, but we, we ended up buying there because it was a price point that we could afford and like that worked with mm -hmm. our budget and also just looking at other homes that were Airbnb there, what their, um, their, what their rental history looked like. So I wanted to make sure since we wanted to do it short term rental that it was rent, like what price point can we rent it and to make sure there was actually people coming in. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting too, is that there's a lot of older homes in town, but a lot of people have been buying the lots of land and building new construction. So I think it's an up and coming town. So I thought like, you know, I think this is a great place to invest and in that it's going to appreciate through the years. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So I know you're about to launch it and we can definitely go into an episode specifically on short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. um, but I wish you luck with that one and, you know, it'll be so much fun for you and your family. Thank you. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, so I think we definitely talked a lot about, you know, a little bit of everything and giving a very general overview of, you know, finding uh, the location, how to analyze the deal. And, uh, and all of these can be specifically broken down in our future episodes. Um, so stay tuned. Um, we have so much value to provide to all of you guys. Um, you know, Diana, given the fact that she is new on this journey, can definitely give you more experience on being a new investor uh, in this massive real estate industry and being the fact that I've been in this industry for over 10 years now, I can provide a little bit more experience about what I've learned, um, the mistakes that I've made. Um, you know, I definitely made money, but I also lost a lot of money. So I can definitely talk about that in a future episode about how I lost $50,000. So stay tuned, guys. Until the next time. Thank you.
Bye.